people, but Madeline Keenan, you know, we know her as a politician, as an ambassador, U.S. Department Secretary of Education. I know her kids, a great mom, a wife. She's been a mentor to me and a friend, which is really important. I, I love Madeline Keenan and I love her writing. Uh, I think most of us have probably seen her most recent book, Coming of Age, My Journey to the 80s, which I thought was an extraordinary book, really about thriving while aging and about as we age, we can have passion, we can have intimacy, um, we can have joy. And Madeline Kuhn continues to lecture. She's run, she works really hard on an um, uh, emerge, which is to help women who want to run for elected office really go into a training program to do that. And you can see now uh, in its few years since Madeline founded that there are, I, I'm in the Vermont House of Representatives. A lot of young women have gotten into positions in Vermont leadership, which is, and it's all because of Madeline. She also, as you know, um, writes for Vermont Digger on political issues. So she is very prolific. Now, tonight, uh, Madeline has a new book of poems coming out on August 22nd. So she's going to read some of her poems um, from Red Kite, Blue Sky. So Madeline, if you read for us. Joan, thank you. Yes. Um, I'm going to read a couple of poems from that new book, which will actually come out sooner than that, April 22nd. And this first poem, Blue Sky, I wrote towards the beginning of the virus of the epidemic. All right. And I went for a walk and I felt better. Blue sky, I have time, a bushel full, no, a truckload, a storage unit full of time. Still, I portion time out carefully, almost like in the old days, except now I stretch my neck and raise my head and keep it there until it hurts to look at the blue sky. Long ago, before coronavirus, I looked at the sky for weather or at night for stars. The blue sky gave me answers by the hour. I didn't even say thank you. Yesterday I went for a walk and gazed upward, expecting little. I looked up at the blue sky. The longer I looked, I saw more layers of blue. The blue sky had depth, a clean teacup of blue without a crack. I could see through one blue to find another blue. The longer I held my head up, blue became more blue until I continued my walk and thanked the sky for being blue. This next poem is on the light side. It's called Cat, C-A-T. My cat plumps herself on the straight arm of my sofa, feet tucked neatly under her coat, purring her song. She invites me to smooth her, to feel her pillow under my hand. I'm not invited inside her thoughts. She sits mute as a Buddha carved from stone. Whoosh! She streaks to the next room as if on fire. See something I can't see. Hear something I can't I, I can't hear. Composed again, even sedate. She claims proximity. Sits where I sit, walks where I walk, climbs across my lap and seats herself regally by my side. She stares intelligent at me as if ready for a chat. Her coin round pupils are, circles and, are circled in gold. She holds her gaze until I give up. A yawn unclips her red mouth her pointy tiger teeth, a beast. Her mouth closes, her head is lowered. Ah, uh, we are companions once again. Good kitty, I say in my baby voice and think I'm falling in love until she paws herself onto the dining table as if it were her place to sit across from me. Off, I yell, nothing. Down, I shout, nothing. 
she is like an Egyptian statue buried with Tutankhamun, impatient, irritated. I exercise my two-handed superiority and drag her down, pulling against her needle paws. She finds a chair that fits her form and sleeps the day away. She's a night creature, silent in her roaming until crash, I startle. What is it? Tablecloth askew, candlesticks toppled, candles unhinged. My sweet cat, having terrified herself, has zipped into oblivion. Together again, we sit on the sofa, her flank wetted to my thigh. Her small chin lifted high rests on my arm. I feel her cool breath hover over my willing wrist. Such a good kitty, I purr. Lying in bed at night, I wait for her usual visit. She gives no hint of her stealthy approach. A quick paw lands on my chest and then another until four paws have stepped over my body. She plants herself on the other side and searches until she finds a nest between my twig legs. She curls herself into a coiled rope, no beginning or end. We share our bodily warmth, hers intermingled with mine, searching for a separate sleep. I dare not move. Is, we have time for one more. I can't hear you anyway. This is called. Yes, one more. That would be great, Madeline. One more. Okay, this is called Voyage. Last night, I thought about my mother's voyage to America, what she faced by herself, saying goodbye to all the relatives at the Zurich train station accepting prettily wrapped boxes of chocolate from everyone and given to me on the train to carry safely in a sack, heavy for a six-year-old. Left behind on the train, how awful. Did my brother make it up or did this happen that Nazi soldiers walked through the train questioning everyone? The conductor vouched for my mother, having met her regularly on the commuter train in Zurich. I remember how scratchy the blanket was in the sleeping car. That's all. Waiting in Genoa for a boat to arrive, our names on the manifest with an H for Hebrew, I found out later. I looked out the window from the top floor of the hotel and saw we thought Japanese soldiers lined up in formation 10 days before Italy entered the war. My mother did not unclothe her fear to us. We found our cabin already occupied by two women and a baby. We settled in somehow lugging the big blue trunk which stood upright and open sideways. Safely inside our cabin on the SS Manhattan, I was delighted by the new taste of apple pie a la mode and played shuffleboard on the tilting ship. We lined up alphabetically at the pier under the letter M for May with a couple named Muller who became our friends and gave each of us a beautiful book. My cat is invading my territory. <laughs> <laughs> and who became our friends and gave each of us a beautiful book every Christmas. Finally, cousins Fred and Irene Kahn found us. She, already American, wearing a red hat, red shoes, red pocketbook. She opened our eyes wide. Mudlin, you have to have coils. All the goils in America have coils. Girls. We repeated her words for years, silly with laughter. Oh, Madeline, that's beautiful. And, and your cat made an appearance too, which was yes. perfect. <laughs> that you did a poem. So thank you so much for those. Um, now, where can we get your book? 
Well, it's not out yet, but you, you'll be able to get it at a bookstore and uh, Amazon, and I'll I'll have I'll have more information. But it's supposed to be out April twenty second. Okay, red kite, blue sky. Thanks. Thank you. And I, I love your poetry, and I love how you also in your last book you you put poetry in there as well. And Jennifer Murray says it will be at our public library as well as it opens this summer. So. We look forward to that. Thank you for helping us tonight, Madeline.